Now the Apostle Paul taught the same thing. The Apostle Paul said, in the Old Testament, Moses couldn't see God. He was invisible. He wanted God to show himself. God said, I cannot show you. I'm invisible. He said, but the light of God was shining there and Moses was filled with the light of God. But the Apostle Paul said, now that Christ is here, the Son of God is here, he said, now the presence of God, the face of God is shining to us from the face of Christ. You see, uh, from the face of Christ. Apotu prosoku tu kriu, it says in Greek. You see, otritsa synabogia, from the face of, of Christ. And then he says, hosestini kontu theu, who is the icon of God, who is the obras yevivimomo boga, the image of the invisible God. And that's why we have the icons. That's why we have the icons. And one very interesting thing, maybe I'll take the time to tell you, that in the Old Testament, when Moses spoke to God in the temple, they had an altar like this altar. They had seven candles like we have. And on their altar, they had the Ten Commandments. And then in a box, they had the manna that came from heaven, the bread that God fed the people with in the desert. And on their table, they had the rod of Aaron that budded, that Moses used when he led the people out. And then over the altar, there was a, a place it was called uh, in the Hebrew language, a mercy seat. It was a, a, an empty place. Nothing was there except two angels were on either side. Or a cherub on either side and it was empty. And that's where God in the tabernacle spoke to Moses. Now Christ has come. Now Christ has come. The Son of God has come. The Savior is here. The icon of God in human flesh has come. And what do we Christians do, Orthodox? We have the same table. But on our table is not the Ten Commandments, it's the four Gospels. On our table is not a box with the manna, but the box with Holy Communion. You see, it's here. The Gospel, the box. And on our altar, is not the rod that Aaron budded, but the cross of Christ. And then over our altar, we have the mercy seat. That icon up there is called in our church, in Greek, hilistirion, which means mercy seat. But it's called the living mercy seat. But it's not invisible anymore, because the Mary, who is this throne, has Christ in her, and he's visible. You can see him. And that's why that icon is over our altar. Because God has become man and the invisible God has become visible. So we can say in our church, like Philip said to Nathaniel, come and see. Come and see. You want to see? Come. You can see. You can see everything. But first you've got to come. <laughs> if you don't come, you're not going to see anything. So you have to come. Come as often as you can. Every time that door is open, come. Every time the bell is ringing, come. Every time the priest is here with his vestment, come. And you will see, as it says in the Gospel, the heavens open. You will see the glory of God shining from the face of Christ. You will see all our salvation that Christ has worked out because he has become really human. But it's not enough just to come. Lots of folks come, but they don't see anything. <laughs> or maybe they see, I don't know, purple vestment, or they see some interesting pictures. You know, but what do they see? Well, to see is not enough to look at the fresco. It's not enough to look at the altar. We've got to see what is shown of God through this. Just like when you look at the face of Jesus. You don't just see a man, you see the Son of God. So we have to come and see. And it says in the Beatitude that the choir just sang in Slavonic, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see. We have to want to see. How many times Jesus says to the person, What do you want? And the blind man says, That I might see. 
But Jesus said, I have come that the people who are blind will see, but the people who we say see will be struck blind because they don't see anything. Why? Because their heart is dirty. Their heart is not clean. Their heart is hard. They can't see anything. Many people saw Jesus on earth, but they didn't say he was the Son of God. They said he was a Samaritan, had a devil, and they killed him. They killed him. They didn't see God in him. Because in order to see God in him, you have to be wanting to see. You have to want to see and hear what is really there to be seen and heard. Otherwise, it condemns you. Otherwise, it doesn't save you. Now, you here in La Habana, you're very, very fortunate people. Because you have such a beautiful church with such an unbelievable icons. And you're going to have practically every event in the life of Christ made visible to your eyes. And it's all here to be seen. So come. Come as often as you can. But when you come, also pray to God to purify your heart so that you would see more than just colors and pictures and human figures, but that through these human faces, because every human being is made in the icon of God, every saint is an icon of God, that through those faces, we would see God, and we would see the heavens open, and we would see the angels, and we would see what we are created for. This is what we have on the first Sunday of Lent, because this is what our whole faith is. This is our whole faith. One person once put it so nicely in, in English. In fact, it was a, a friend of mine who used to come to this church uh, almost 40 years ago when he was a chemical engineer at Union Carbide here in Buffalo. Uh, and now he's a priest. He only was here one year. He went to the seminary and became a priest. And he used to say, for us Orthodox, everything is Mary's womb. Mary's womb and Christ's tomb. Mary's womb, God becomes visible and incarnate as a real human being. And then he dies on the cross. And in his tomb, he tramples death and recreates the whole world. So on this day of the beginning of the, the end of the first week of Lent, the Sunday of Orthodoxy, we'll have a special service tonight. Let's pray to God that we would come, but let's also pray to God that we would really see.